Hi, welcome back to PSL Living. I'm Jenny Grow. Michael Busha with the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council is here. He's the executive director. This council, I don't want to say you're behind the scenes. Maybe not everybody knows what you do, well, but you're definitely busy. You're kind of the quiet company. You're the quiet and, ones. And thank you for having me, by absolutely, the way, on the show. Absolutely. It's the first time for, um, for well, me welcome. on the show, so I appreciate that. Okay. Um, it, the Regional Planning Council, just a, if I could just a little short story about Please. who we are, uh, how we were born, really. Okay. Um, it, it happened back in the 70s, actually back in 1976. Now, the Treasure Coast is one of 11 Regional Planning Councils around the state. So, okay. And originally, the Regional Planning Councils um, were conceived by the local governments, by the cities and the towns uh, of the Treasure Coast region which, by the way, is Palm Beach, Martin, St. Lucie, and Indian River County. Mm -hmm. There are 50 cities and four counties that really make up the Treasure Coast and established the Treasure Coast region. It wasn't the state, it wasn't the federal government. But by interlocal agreement, these mm -hmm. 50 cities and four counties decided probably would be a good idea to have a forum uh, where they could sit down and talk to each other. And mm -hmm. at the time, the issue of the day was growth. There's just no doubt in anybody's mind back That's then. That's still the so, issue, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it, it may be a little less of an issue, but back then, back then it was um, scary there growth. was deer in the headlights right. kind of thing. Nobody, about half the local governments had comp plans, half didn't, some didn't have zoning. Uh, this is it. all around the state. They yeah. weren't prepared, and they needed a place where they could come and sit, I think, and talk to each other, um, to get experience from those who had already experienced some high growth, uh, understand what solutions they provided. Mm -hmm. And we had situations where counties were stealing water from other counties and um, putting big projects next to another community and causing impacts. Oh my and there was no real construct for resolving those problems, right. no real forum for the, for, or at least this is a monthly forum, by right. the way, to get together and talk about these things. So back then the city, um, was about 4,000 people, 4,300 people in mm -hmm. 1976. And mm -hmm. that's when Treasure Coast got started about 38 years ago. Mm -hmm. Now there's 160, I want to say 167,000 people. Mm -hmm. It's the fourth the largest city mm -hmm. just behind Fort Lauderdale in mm -hmm. southeast Florida. Mm -hmm and about the ninth largest city in the state. Right. And at the time, uh, the city represented about 8% of the county's growth. Now it's 60% of the county's population right. occurs in the city of Port St. Lucie. So it's come a long way, there's been a lot of growth, and you're right, that remains a growth management um, function of the Regional Planning Council. It's still a big issue for the region. Mm -hmm. But I think, um, to just focus on that would be to miss some of what the, some of the other fundamental responsibilities of why these local governments back in 1976 established themselves okay. as a, a forum. And, and by the way, the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council is made up of 19 local elected officials from around the region. Port St. Lucie elected officials as Two well. Two are on, yeah, Mayor Faella right. and um, I believe it's Councilwoman um, Shannon, Shannon Martin's on okay. um, the council. And so there are 19 uh, elected officials, counties and cities, and then the governor appoints nine. So there's 28 members. They serve as a board of directors, which they review the work program and the budget. Um, there's 10 staff that help uh, facilitate the things that the council, these, this council of government is interested in accomplishing. And its offices are located in Stewart. Okay. And uh, they meet monthly. Okay. So, it's been quite, I've been with the council almost 33 years, so it's mm -hmm. been quite a journey. Mm -hmm. um, we've seemed to have evolved into a lot of different things, mm -hmm. but always at the request of what the local governments were looking for, what they needed, what was missing. Okay. Um, hurricane preparedness um, was a big one for us back in the early 80s to get everybody ready. Some of the first plans in the state came out of the regional planning councils in cooperation with the local governments because they needed some help in response to right. those uh, kind of disasters. And you were involved with some other big projects that have gone yeah, on here in Port Yeah, for the city itself. I um, The first, um, actually, planning for the city center, 
mm -hmm. um, that was established up at Walton Road, which still has a ways to go, but has great promise, I think, right. and great potential as a district, a special district for the city. We were heavily involved in the planning of that, bringing VGTI to the region and finding a economic development assistance grant for $3 million to help get the building built. Right. Um, the long-range transportation planning that was done in cooperation with the St. Lucie uh, TPO right. um, to get the long-range transportation planning done for the city. So it's not like this council and wants to stop growth. It's not like you're you're no. you're helping facilitate it. Is well, that the right? Well, to, to manage it so that in fact it. the the built environment, the social environment, and the uh, natural environment, there's still something left here that we haven't erased, and there's still a reason um, right. to enjoy this place. In Absolutely. fact, just to improve the quality of life. You can accommodate all this growth, but care needs to be taken mm -hmm. in how it's done. And, and these local elected officials, this council of governments that I work for, um, most of them um, at all times have been very careful about um, you know how to accommodate growth, where we should grow, how much we should grow. Mm -hmm. It's no easy trick, um, mm -hmm. and I think they've done that. Um, you know, um, well, let me just stop. For a minute. <laughs> the other functions of the Regional Planning Council, okay. besides this um, growth management function, okay. was really a forum to fix problems, um, whatever they might be, to get them together on a monthly basis to talk to each other. And it's nice, I imagine, mm -hmm. to have other people, other groups, um, yeah. municipalities Invo that have experienced that particular well, problem and could offer some assistance. Yeah, as I mean, the council's in the communication business. All right, I mean, I mean, in the education business. Right. So as much as the local elected officials who are assigned to the Regional Planning Council want to get out of it, they can. Um, there's good dialogue at the meetings. The state uh, elected officials are sometimes there. Their aides are there. So there's lots of issues to get talked about that maybe they wouldn't have a chance to, to understand those perspectives from okay. the other local governments. Okay. So maybe, hopefully, they bring something back right. um, to their own jurisdiction that they could learn. Um, the staff at the Regional Planning Council was built to really amplify the capacity of all the local governments to, in fact, get their work done. I mean, not every local government can have an architect, a transportation engineer, an ecologist. So right. they lean on the regional planning councils, especially a lot of the smaller local governments lean on the regional planning councils for that expertise and um, to identify opportunities for working together, whether it's cleaning up the waterways, whether it's on spring training, um, you name it. Mm -hmm. um, we also... Um, act as kind of a delivery system for the federal and state programs that are always coming down. There's always things coming down from the top that the local governments have to implement. So okay. the Regional Planning Council is a delivery system for that. And it's important because our Regional Planning Councils are sort of the bottom-up part of planning. You get all this stuff pushing down. Sometimes it's not perfectly crafted for what you need it for in okay. this region. So the Regional Planning Councils modify that so that the local governments get the services and they get the attention they need. So that's a very important function, okay. the, the bottom-up part of planning. Also, the Regional Planning Councils as a group are much more powerful than just, say, one local government, right. say, sort of insisting on something, something to be done. Right. Um, the, the VA nursing home, for example, mm -hmm. the Regional Planning Council and all the local governments kind of got together and said, boy, Governor, what a good idea this is. Yeah. And I think the legislators, federal and state, they listen a lot more when there's 54 different local governments saying, right. hey, by the way, this is a really good idea and you ought to do this for the region. And it helps so, that this is an established council. You've been around for a long for time. For 38 years. So as a sort of this, this so council of rodeo. Logan. No, it's not the <laughs> first rodeo. The last thing they do, and, and this is pretty important, because most of the local governments um, are busy they have day-to-day -day things they're trying to keep up. Staffs have been cut back because of the, the, the Great Recession and other reasons. And so they're one of the few organizations that get together monthly and mm -hmm. sort of look around the corner down the street, over right. the fence, to see what issues are really coming okay. so they can get prepared for, um, for those issues. So it's, it's kind of this Council of Governments, um, they have evolved since the early growth management days. Now that still is a function. <laughs> um, we still look at developments of regional impact, which are large projects um, that have more than one uh, county of impact, okay. and local government comprehensive plans. But that's a very small amount 
of our work. Okay. Um, most people don't know that we trained about 12,000 of your first responders, police and firemen. Oh. So when they get out on the scene, they know what they're getting into. Um, okay. So we do a lot of that training. That is oh, a wow. federal program that came down. So the Regional Planning Council isn't handling the fire hoses or, or, oh, right. or shooting the guns. Right. But we provide that training. Oh, okay. Uh, to the and local how are you governments. funded, the council? Primarily through the local governments. There okay. is a due structure that each. Um, each county pays 43 cents a person, and that's about 30 30 percent of our budget. The remainder of our budget comes from federal, state, and other special projects that we do for local governments, okay. and we do a lot of those in okay. the areas of downtown redevelopment, brownfields cleanup, uh, economic development assistance, and any kind of technical assistance that the local governments need okay. uh, or services that they require. So we're in the service delivery business <laughs> and the communications <laughs> business. And one thing you should know about regional planning councils, especially Treasure Coast, we never go uh, where we're not asked to go. So it's a local, locally driven program. It's a locally driven council. People so want to participate. That's they can. okay. And if they want the services, that's okay too. Right. But um, and we're happy to to be there when we're asked. Okay. Um, but it is really um, sort of a home rule organization that gets a chance to look at um, regional issues and problems and mm -hmm. on a monthly basis they get to talk to each other about those things okay. and hopefully create a better place um, as we can, like you said, as we continue to grow <laughs> right. because growth is still and that's really one of the big issues coming up. Absolutely. What do we do with the next wave of growth? Right. How is it going to occur? Is it going to occur oh out my. in the countryside or are we going to redevelop our cities and towns? Right. Um, cleaning up our waterways, another big issue coming up. How we're going to deal with transportation with yeah. more people, another big issue. That's overwhelming, my goodness. <laughs> and then finally, talent supply. How do we deal with uh, improving our talent supply and educational attainment? Because the regional planning councils are also um, involved in in dealing with the uh, school boards. Oh, okay. And by the way, the, one of the reasons they're involved in dealing with the school boards because I happen to chair the Martin County School Board there as well. There you go. So, okay. But there's a great connection to be made um, with economic development and improving our talent supply Absolutely. and educational attainment. Absolutely. So the jobs get created here. Okay, so you and said that you operate and your offices are out of Stewart. Out of Stewart. If people want more information about this council, do you have information they available online? They can visit our website, um, www.tcrpc.org. Okay. That's uh, a great, or they can call call me at 772-221-4060. Okay. Uh, they can call okay. me anytime. Okay, and that's great. Happy to talk to them, show them around the office, show them what we do. Okay. Um, we're a pretty transparent agency. Yeah. And um, again, I um, just really enjoyed yeah, talking yeah, to absolutely. you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's great. I mean, I'm sure we barely scratched the surface of what yeah, you've been I mean, involved in over the years. Yeah, several other things that... Um, um, if I could, the last thing um, that, sure. that really is is important to Port St. Lucie is their waterways. Um, yeah. I think it's a resource that, because there's been so much going on in the city, right. um, you know, trying to keep up with infrastructure and make sure everybody has a has a place on the road to drive and things Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. So, but um, the waterways, access to it, development of it. Um, I believe that's one of the next big issues for the city. Mm -hmm. um, you know, great cities have great infrastructure, and that doesn't mean just roads. It means natural infrastructure right. and civic infrastructure and things like that. So we just finished um, for the St. Lucie Transportation Planning Organization and the Martin Metropolitan Planning Organization mm -hmm. um, something called the Waterways Plan. And um, there's some nice things that came out of that for the city um, related to using your canal banks, um, maybe for more greenways, maybe more access, hiking, right. bike riding, things like that. There's a tract over on Westmoreland near the Botanical Gardens, right, right on the water. That could be great for redevelopment oh, yeah, for so the city we've and access. Quite a bit about that, yes. Access to the water and camping opportunities oh, yeah. um, on the water. And then finally, the marine industry here, um, I think, is an undervalued, under evaluated, and misunderstood industry. There's 3,100 jobs in St. Lucie County related to the marine industries mm -hmm. and water. And it's about $250 million shot in the arm to the economy. 
and we're working right now with the school district in St. Lucie County to create career training programs so that our students are ready um, yeah. and able to work when they get out of school in that industry. That's great. And the last thing I, I wanted to tell you about, <laughs> I'm sorry, going on, I probably never use any of this, but the last thing I wanted to tell you about is putting the port back in Port St. Lucie. Right. There really is no port here, so I don't, this is probably a great story about why they called it a port, but for another, Port St. Lucie, but for another time. Okay. But at the end of Walton Road, um, there's obviously not depth there for a port, but an overlook, um, you know, so people could view the water, park there, look out right. for weddings, whatever they sure, want to have. Sure. There are special events on the water. That's, that's, that's another piece that came out of the waterways plan that might be something the city could take advantage of. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what the regional planning councils are for, to, show, to show opportunities that they may not have seen before. Right, that so. mind just doesn't stop, so. does it? You just always, you just drive around and come up with these ideas, yeah. right? Well, the citizens actually helped us build the plan. So, okay. and they're frankly, the citizens we found are the best planners. They, That's great. Because they live here. Yeah, absolutely. And they know what they need. So. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here <laughs> and telling us all about your stuff. We'll definitely have to have you back again. I know there's right. lots more to talk yeah, about. Yeah, there's lots of details. So, absolutely. Um, anyways. Absolutely. Well, Michael, thank you. <laughs> Michael Bush, uh, Executive Director with the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. You. Appreciate absolutely. It. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Okay. We'll be right awesome. back after these messages. Thank you.